Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be doing a liquid inky type text reveal. So basically, it almost looks like it's being handwritten um, as we speak, so it is a really cool animation. By the way, this was a collaboration between me and my buddy Mark Richardson. You could check out his website as well as his YouTube channel where he'll be posting a video of him doing the hand um, drawings for this. So he's the guy that, that did the actual you know, handwriting for the flow motion graphics. So he's really talented. He's worked with a lot of really cool names. He has a video on his channel that is how to get clients if you're starting out, which is a great video. And uh, as well as there will be some sort of speed art or tutorial for the hand lettering in this video. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects. Uh, we have a composition here set to, um, let's see, 1920 by 1080. I have it set to 25 frames per second. This is hand drawn um, and I don't really want to animate 60 frames per second. I'd rather animate 25 frames per second. Um, and uh, in addition, I think that it kind of gives it much more of a cinematic look than 60 frames a second. Uh, you see all the issues at 60 frames per second, but at 25, you somehow, you just don't. There's just not even much information there to make mistakes. So um, just so you know, that's my composition type. So I'm just gonna go uh, layer new solid and I'm gonna make a white background layer. I'm just gonna lock that, that's my background. And I have already um, brought in the Illustrator file. So this is um, the Illustrator file from Illustrator. You can just drag in Illustrator files in your project pane. And here it is. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm only gonna animate this flow for this tutorial. Um, the reason being is that it will just take so long to do this. And believe it or not, I've done this once before, um, a couple years ago, and uh, and I'm, just did it about 20 minutes ago, but I didn't hit record. So uh, it took me about 45 minutes to do just this portion here. So um, just so you know, that's how long this is gonna take. So I'm gonna actually leave out motion here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this pen tool here and just mask out uh, motion. And hit M on the keyboard and hit invert it. And now I can just hit Y on the keyboard and drag this anchor point up to flow. Bring flow to the center and hit S on the keyboard and scale it up. One thing that I'm gonna wanna do is make sure I have continually rasterize on. That way it maintains the vectorization of the layer. So if you don't have it clicked on, it's fuzzy. If you have it clicked on, it's not fuzzy. So, okay, so we have the logo in here now and I'm just gonna lock this layer. So to start, I'm gonna be tracing this layer over with the pen tool. Now I'm not gonna be using this layer to reveal the text. Um, I'm just using it as path information. So just grabbing the pen tool here, um, I'm gonna make maybe a pretty thin line. It doesn't need to be super thick. And I am just going to, uh, let's see how I wanna do this. I'm going to have this blob kind of start in the center and curl up and come around and then hit the text. So let's see if I can just kind of click and drag and make sure my fill is set to not on. <laughs> um, and just clicking and dragging so I get these Bezier handles. That way I could I could adjust these layer, these later, because um, obviously this is gonna look like junk the first time I do it. But now I'm just going to uh, draw across here and make sure I click and drag so I get these Bezier handles and it's not gonna be perfect the first time, I will be going back through this uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, clean it up. Just created some path information there. And now uh, I'm just gonna double click this and now I'm gonna start making this look nice and smooth. So this part will probably be challenging only because it's a tight curl and every imperfection will be extremely visible. So uh, this may not be my best hand-drawn work, uh, but if you know anything about me, you know that I suck at hand-drawn work anyway. It's not my specialty. In fact, I'm really not good at motion graphics. What I'm good at is, is coming up with unique ways to solve unique problems in After Effects. But when it comes to actually like designing stuff, like I'm, I'm really not that great. Um, yeah, but like I said, I, this is a technique that I used a few years ago for a client. Maybe it was two years ago, or maybe it was like one year ago. I can't really remember, but it was, uh, I think it came out really great, but you know, it's not really a style that has that has 
maintained its its I don't want to say it's not as popular, but it's quite frankly it's just not as popular as it used to be. Um, hand animating it does take time, and you know once it's done it's done. There's not really much you can do about it. So uh, you know, and it, you know I think it looks really cool personally. I think it looks cool, but maybe you know it's. Maybe it was overused. I'm, I'm not too sure why why people don't really do it too much anymore. But there were a number of other tutorials that I learned this learned how to do this method with um, back when I originally did work for a client. But uh, I think there's a lot of really new cool things in After Effects now to make this um, to make this tutorial unique. Because uh, yeah, there's there's just some really cool new new effects in After Effects that I think will you know differentiate this video. So. Uh, yeah, be warned. There's always multiple different ways to do things in After Effects and there's always multiple tutorials on similar things. It's just That's just the nature of the beast. It's kind of funny because everyone learns After Effects at their own speed So where you're at is where somebody might have been at, you know, five years ago So what's new to you is what was new to them five years ago. So there's things that I come across today that maybe somebody did a video on three years ago but it's still new to me, and I think After Effects changes so frequently that um, that you know I think there's still room to to, to do these things uh, because not every tutorial you know every tutorial even if it's covering the same topic there might be different tools used or different techniques used so yeah so if there's some overlap that's kind of just the nature of it but anyways just cleaning this up here just making sure I get nice clean path information because again I'm only going to be using this for my path. So that looks pretty good. Um, what I'm also going to do, well first I should probably rename this to blob or path blob1 B-L-O-B and I'm just going to kind of make a new another layer kind of tracing over but now for this part of the F. So basically the technique here to is that you want to trace as if it was cursive being written, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the handwriting or the handwriting out technique, right? It's it's to make it look like the the lettering is being written out. So make sure you follow the lines and you create the path in a way that looks like it would it would actually be handwritten like that. So if that means breaking up this path into two paths, then that's what you might need to do. Okay, so we have our two paths. I'm gonna rename this now to path blob two. And uh, come here and make my first blob. So the blob is just gonna be kind of like a raindrop shape. Uh, I don't wanna stroke, but I do wanna fill. So I'm just gonna make sure I turn fill on and turn stroke to zero. And I'm gonna make my fill kind of like a red color just so it stands out really well. So just clicking and dragging. Simply create a blob. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna press Y on the keyboard here and just move the anchor point into the center. So there's a couple things that I want. I want the scale, so I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard. I'm gonna hit P, set position keyframe, and R, rotational keyframe, and then hit U. Um, so now coming into path blob one, I'm just going to open this up and get my path information. So I'm going to set a keyframe, hit control C and copy that keyframe and paste it right on the position. So what that does is it moves my blob and my blob will follow this all around. One thing that you need to do though, cause I mean, you'll have to set rotational keyframes this whole way, but there's actually a built into an after effect. So you don't have to do that. If you go to layer transform auto orient, auto orient along path, hit OK. It will automatically orient this, but you notice that it, it needs to be rotated a little bit. So I'm just gonna go to the beginning where I know where it's nice and flat, where I could easily rotate this into position. I'm just gonna rotate that just like that until it's kind of parallel to the uh, layer. And I'm just gonna click the rotational key um, keyframe uh, to stopwatch and it'll delete those keyframes. And now this will stick to this exactly how you'd expect it to. But there is still plenty of hand animating needed to be done here. 
um, for starters, I'm just gonna drag all these layers out or the, all of these keyframes out, highlighting all the keyframes, hold alt and drag this out to maybe six seconds. Um, I could always make it go faster later, but this will give me a good amount of um, keyframe resolution if, um, if that makes sense. Basically there will be a lot of keyframes in between these points that I could you know, add some nice animating to. So another thing I should probably do is scale this down to a size that looks appropriate. And that size looks pretty good. And now I can just click that away because I don't need a scale keyframe either. So what I will need though is a path keyframe. So I'm just gonna open this up, set a path keyframe. Now hit you on the keyboard. Uh, making sure, uh, lock these layers so I don't accidentally drag and move them. Um, I'm going to be moving this or messing with the path of this droplet here. Um, it's not ultimately that important how close you stick to it, to the path, but you definitely want to kind of do it as much as you think you're gonna need because you may see the tail, you may not. It, it all just depends on, on how you animate, animate this. So that looks pretty good. Just keeping the tail on the edge and simple as that. So I'm probably gonna get to a point where I could just kind of blow through this and speed it up for you. But uh, let's just see first. If I come across anything really super interesting, I'll definitely let you know. But let's see if we uh, come across anything. Uh, one thing is that I feel like if if the blob is moving in a straight path, it's it should be kind of longer because I feel like the blob would be moving faster. But that's just kind of like an an interpretation of of how you want it to look. But basically, you want to just kind of think of this blob as being liquid. So right here, when it's hitting this sharp curve, you know, momentum comes into play and this blob kind of collapses onto itself slightly. So there will be some hand animating done there, but as it comes out of this curve, I'm going to increase the uh, length of the tail. Again, just setting some keyframes where I think it's necessary or appropriate. Again, this is path information, so the blob will be moving, uh, will be changing shape this whole time, which I'm sure you know, but just in case you didn't know. And then after I set a couple keyframes um, with some open spots, sometimes I'll go through and just make sure that it looks good still. And if so, I just keep moving on. And if you watch my videos in the past, you'll know that I'm not very good at hand animating and I'm not good at using paths. I just suck at, uh, at knowing when I could move them and when I could change the path and when I'm changing the position. But anyways, we're actually blowing through this pretty fast, much faster than we did the first time or the first time I did it and didn't record it. So again, we're hitting a curve, momentum's coming into play. That tail's going to kind of shrink in. So I'm just gonna finish this out and we'll be right back. Okay, there we go. So we'll just see kind of what this looks like. And it looks like an organically moving blob. 
And this may be too slow for you, and that's fine. You could always speed it up later. Without a doubt, you could always speed it up later. So now for this second portion here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this blob. So I'm gonna rename to blob one. Control D. And when we get to this point, see, open this up. I'm gonna delete all of these keyframes. But what I will do is I'm gonna open up this blob two, come into the path, set a keyframe, copy that, and paste it on the position. But what I need to do is make sure the speed matches. So I'm just gonna bring this together and increase the speed. So it looks like it matches the speed. And it does. So again, you just hold these, you select all of them, you hold Alt, and you could stretch that as you need. So now I could actually just close this up. I don't need that layer anymore. In fact, I, uh, I'm gonna need the layer a little bit still actually, so let's, let's actually hold it. So I'm just gonna be doing the exact same thing I did before, but for this secondary blob, and just setting path keyframes. Just keeping that tail right where you want it. Simple as that. Perfect. Okay, so if all the blobs done, and now I could just delete these two path keyframes, or these two path for the blobs. Um, we don't need that, and we can actually see what this looks like without the other thing. So this already looks pretty cool. Add some motion blur. Perfect. And now we make that visible. All right. So. Now it's time for us to really do the hand animating. This is the part that's gonna really take a long time. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in while we're here. Might as well just get started. So, first things first, I'm gonna turn motion blur off so I don't get any distortion. And I'm gonna create, a, I'm actually gonna lock these two blobs as well. It's probably a good idea. And now I'm going to create a shape and I'm gonna change the color to, I don't know what's a good color, that would not conflict with the background, maybe orange. And I'm just gonna click and drag and make sure I get these Bezier handles because that's the important part. And I'm just gonna move this shape over to about here. And I'm gonna rename this to, to Blob Reveal. Set motion blur on, open this up to path, set a path keyframe. And this is when we're gonna start hand animating and where I show you that I don't know how to use paths. So I like to kind of, you know, there's two things that, that you gotta remember, right? There's momentum, there's speed, and there's, there's boundary layer stickiness, right? So water sticks to the sides of a container um, and water will, will stay at the bottom of a bucket if you swing the bucket. So those are kind of two obtuse ways of saying, but basically you need to make sure you identify which way the blob's going. Um, and so which way the, the water or the liquid will, will, will flow. So um, for this blob, I'm gonna bring the transparency down so I can see the underlying blob. But um, it's time for us to hand animate this. So opening up my paths and I'm just gonna go Maybe key 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 by or um, frame by frame. Maybe not. It all just depends on what look we're getting. But the only important thing is is that all of the black is covered. That is the literally. That's the one thing you'll just have to do. Um, if it's not, you're going to be going through hundreds and hundreds of keyframes to fix that problem. If if you don't, because again, each keyframe is 
or each frame of this blob is built upon the last frame of the blob. So if you make a mistake, it will propagate. So here we are, the liquid is just kind of flowing. And I'm gonna go maybe every two keyframes here, but I'm just gonna keep this kind of flowing along with with the, the blob, blob one. And you can always look in between the frames to see if it looks good to you. But I kind of sometimes like there to be almost like a wave. So it kind of catches up and, and kind of begins to cascade in like a wave. And again, the amount of time you put into this will result in the in the visual style of it. Again, this is the this is the very artistic part of this, where if you're really good at this, you'll do well. And if you're not really good at it, it'll look probably just okay. That's probably where I'm at. Mine's probably just going to look okay, which is fine, um, because again, it's it's happening so fast that it it literally almost just doesn't even matter. Um, how well it looks. So you can see here that I'm having some issues with this with the sidewall. So I'm just gonna add some more points here and simply just bring this down. One thing is that since you know the liquid I don't want to transfer through this through this wall. So I do want to kind of stick to it a little bit. So the liquid comes in and at this point it would likely would likely follow this blob cascade down cascade down and then fill up fill up this spot here just maybe add a couple points and just drag these down. That looks about right. Again, lots of hand animating done here. But again, just momentum and speed and stickiness because this liquid would, you know, if it's, if it's got some speed and it's coming through here, it will hit this back wall first and will likely maintain its momentum and stick to that wall. So we're just gonna kinda facilitate that type of, of look here. And it appears that I, again, this that issue propagated, so I'm, just, I'm gonna have to delete that keyframe now. Um, and redo this. That's why sometimes jumping ahead too many keyframes can get you in trouble, but, um, you know, it all just depends. And you could always add more points here if you maybe want some more resolution in terms of uh, look and feel. You could always add some extra points. Like for here, for example, I'm gonna need to add some points along here just so I could kind of maintain this wall that needs to happen. And just keep moving. It takes time, and it is hand done. So, but you know, again, if you just follow this, follow the simple rules, it'll it'll go pretty quickly, um, and you know, the, the overall effect will look pretty good. It might not be perfect, but you know, you can go back and see if there's anything you could do. Um, maybe make the animation quicker, slower, um, add some motion blur. 
because again, each frame is not gonna be seen individually. It, it will be the summation of the whole of the whole project that is that's important so just kind of keep that in mind when you're going along going along this uh this journey of liquid text reveal it can be it can be i'll be honest it could be a total nightmare but the end effect i think is just it's so original that it's it's hard to deny that that you know anyone will will be able to just simply replicate what you have i mean it can it could be done right it can be done i'm doing it right now showing you that it can be done, but it's not an effect that, that you'll see very often. So I think that's the cool part of this. Just adding points wherever you need more. I feel like I'm moving points off when I should be moving them on. Let's see. So here's an interesting point. We don't want to reveal any of this part of the F or this part of the F because the viewer doesn't even know that that exists yet. So, uh, and the liquid shouldn't either. So this is when we're going to need probably to add a couple points, bullet points here, uh, just to ensure that we have proper lock against against the the side of the text. So I'm probably going to leave this keyframe or that point there. and probably leave that one there and now we'll just use this section here to uh, reveal the text okay we just can't forget that we have this one also so we need to give love to love and attention Can I just skip through a bunch of keyframes there? No need to do every frame, only when it's important. So now momentum would tell you that this liquid will probably stick along this back wall. And this will probably just come straight down See there, we're not revealing too much. So that looks good. Just make sure that sticks. And I'm gonna add some more points here now, just to ensure that this sticks to those corners. And that way I have full control over this liquid. So I think I'm just gonna speed through all this and I'll let you know when we get to the end and I'll let you know if I run into anything that is interesting for you to maybe keep in mind.
Okay, we're back. It's been about 25 or 30 minutes now. Uh, I should probably turn my music off so I don't scream and blow your ears off. Uh, I'm just gonna select all these layers here and hit you on the keyboard so I can see all my keyframes. And that is a lot of hand animating and my back is tired. So let's uh, blob reveal. I'm just gonna hit T on the keyboard and bring that to 100%, drag it on top of the flow motion graphic, go up to alpha inverted mat. And let's see, that did the opposite. So we actually want alpha mat. Uh, and let's see, so we'll just hit play. And that looks pretty cool. It looks really liquidy and drippy. I think that looks pretty cool. I think it's a little slow. So I'm just gonna select all these keyframes. I'm actually gonna drag them out to probably like one second just so it has a little bit of buffer. And I'm just gonna highlight all of them. Again, make sure I just hit you on the keyboard, make sure I have all my keyframes, which I didn't. Um, yeah, so I didn't. Let me make sure I select them all and drag them all over so they're all together. And then I could hold Alt and grab the last keyframe and bring this in and make it happen much faster. So I think it could even be faster than that. Bring it in even more. But here's actually the kicker. If I just control Z all that, what I can easily do is actually drag this out and make it slower, but then pre-compose it and adjust the time later, which I think I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna leave it actually like that. But what I need to do with these blobs is I need to make these blobs the same color as the, as the fill or as the, the logo reveal. So just come and just change the color to the black. Um, for this blob, I want it to be, all right, so blob two. I want it to start as a scale. So hit S on the keyboard, set a scale keyframe, then hit U to see all your keyframes. And I'm just gonna move it over once, but I'm gonna set the scale here to zero. So what this is gonna mean, it's gonna mean that before the blob gets there, there will have no scale, and then it'll come into existence, just like that. So it doesn't get in the way. What I'm also gonna do here is I'm gonna have the first blob start at scale zero. So hit S on the keyboard, set a keyframe, U on the keyboard. I'm just gonna drag this, this keyframe out, set that to zero. And this should, what that does is basically the blob kind of starts from zero and scales up. I'm gonna add some smoothing to that. Just like that, if you wanna see what that looks like. Um, let's see if that looks better. So I'm just messing with these, with the scale keyframe. Just to kinda of see when I want this to come into existence. That looks fine. And again, this is happening really slow, which is okay. Um, but this smoothing, if you're curious, it kind of has that, that type of uh, scaling to it. And now all we really have to do here is add the motion blur. Select all these layers, hit Control Shift C. Pre-compose this and name it uh, Flow. Good right click, go to Time. Enable Time Remapping. Go to the time when it first starts, which will be right there. Set a keyframe. Go to the time when it ends. Which would be right about there. Set a keyframe. I can delete the first and last keyframes. And I could drag these in and make this happen as fast, as slow as I want. So when you move those over, I could change the length and the time that this animation takes to happen. And I could even maybe add some some smoothing to this so it, it happens faster and it ends slower. That's kind of what you want. Again, just using my motion script here, you can get it at mountmograph.com. Um, but it's totally up to you, you know, how, how you wanna do this. But when you use time remapping, it allows you to have much more control over it. 
Um, I, I don't really think that that necessarily looks the best. I think an easy ease would be the best. So it kind of starts out faster or starts out slower. Kind of in the middle, it speeds up a little bit. But overall, most likely just standard time will look fine. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, you could duplicate this layer, control D, uh, make it happen, um, make the bottom one. You could actually add a fill, effect generate fill. And you can maybe make it black, just like the top, but bring the transparency down to like 60% and make the top one, which is black, happen maybe just a couple, a couple of frames after. So now you're kind of almost getting like a double paint on effect. And if you did this with another color, say instead of black, maybe it was, was teal. That might be what you're looking for. And you could do this, you could duplicate this a couple times. You know, and just leave it one frame off. Maybe make this color like a white, almost off-white. And what I'd like to do is, in the beginning, I don't really want to see all these other layers. So right when they hit first, that's when I want the first layer to become visible. So I'm going to hit Alt, left bracket, it'll cut it there. Go one frame, alt left bracket for the next one. And now you kind of get that look. So let's watch this in full speed. So that looks pretty awesome, if you ask me. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe. I know that's so overplayed. But uh, yeah, this took a lot of time and I hope you did enjoy. Anyways guys, be sure to check out Mark's channel and uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Anyways guys, thanks for watching.